So now may the God of hope give you the fullness of peace and may the Lord of life be always with you. In the waters of baptism, Mary died with Christ and rose with him in new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. On behalf of the Poor Clare community who are going to lead us in singing um, this morning, and myself, you're very welcome to St. Clare's. As we gather this morning to celebrate the Requiem Mass for Mary Moore. Mary, as we all know, a woman of deep faith. We come to celebrate that faith, to celebrate her life and her peaceful death. We pray today that we will draw inspiration from that life and from her faith and from her love and service. Again, during these difficult days of COVID-19 restrictions, so few can attend in person in the church to celebrate Mary's Requiem. But we know that many people join us via our parish webcam, and you are all very welcome too, as we gather together, united very much in prayer and faith this morning, um, even though we are separated from one another. So we gather to commend Mary to God, to thank God for her life, and in a special way to offer the support of our love and our prayers to those who will miss her the most. So we offer our prayers and support and our sympathies to our daughters, Josephine and Mary, who are here, and also Bernadette and Margaret, who are joining us uh, from England via our webcam. We also offer the support of our prayers to our sons, Ger and Callum and David, her sisters, Francis, and Maggie and family who are joining us from England via our webcam today too. Our brothers Jim and we to also welcome Michael who is joining us from England. Our sisters-in-law Mary Roberts in Australia and Margaret Moore and son Michael in Abbey Field and her grand and then they're joining us via our webcam as well. Then we offer the support of our prayers too to our her grandchildren, her great grandchildren, our neighbours, friends and all who miss her, and all her extended family. We pray today that God will give you comfort and strength. 
We believe that Mary is back in heaven now, in that place where there are many rooms, a place that she knew that she would be going. She's with her husband, Dano, and her two lovely daughters, Teresa and Antoinette, and her sisters, Nancy and Biddy, and brothers Fred, Martin and John, and all who have gone before her. So we think of them united together in heaven this day. Words of comfort are contained in the book of scriptures now, which I'm going to place on Mary's coffin, because in life she cherished the gospel of Jesus. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. We know as tomorrow we begin Holy Week, that important week of our faith, and we know how the important symbol of the cross is, because we know that Jesus died on the cross so that we would be saved. Because we have also the symbol of the cross on Mary's coffin. In baptism, she herself received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. So that's just two Christian symbols, but we also have other symbols we're going to bring forward and place them on the table. We're going to invite Claudette. I was going to bring a symbol from the Holy Land and just place it on the table there. Mary herself loved the Holy Land and visited there very regular, yearly for many years. Then her family was so important to her as well. So Rebecca is going to bring um, a family photograph. And again, we highlight her wonderful fate. Her Bible was her inspiration, her guide through life. So Adam is going to bring um, her own special Bible. Thank you. So just a few symbols that will remind us that we're here to celebrate Mary's life, her goodness, her love, and her fate. And so, friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we do and forgives any sins, we now pray asking God to gather Mary to himself. Lord, in our grief we now turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant whom you have called from this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace. Count her now among the saints in glory. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to listen to God's word. God speaking to us. So Callum is going to read the first reading. The poor Clares will lead us in the psalm. And then Nicola um, will read the second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life, the life and death of each one of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is longing for your peace near to you my God. Lord you know My 
soul is longing for your peace, near to you, my God. In your peace, I have built in my soul. I have kept my heart in your quiet peace. My soul is longing. Nicola, there. Yeah. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand now as we greet you to gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I invite you to be seated just for a few moments. I suppose, as I said at the start, we're approaching now the week that is so important to our um, faith, Holy Week. And we know that Jesus himself knew that he was coming to the end of his life. And he made that prayer that we have just listened to. He made that prayer to his Father in heaven. Father, the hour has come. Glorify me in your presence. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. So now, glorify me in your presence. And so that was lovely for Jesus to be able to say that he completed the work that God gave him to do. We know too that Mary Moore, 
she too completed the work that God gave her to do. We now know and we believe that she is now glorified in heaven with all the saints. A funeral mass is a time to um, just celebrate the work that a person has done. And today we celebrate Mary's great work. Great work that she did on behalf of Jesus and on behalf of her family. She glorified Jesus on earth, just like Jesus did himself too. We think of her as a young girl growing up initially in Bridewell Lane with her parents May and John O'Brien. We think of her going to the fountain there, which was a bit further down than it is at present, and collecting the water and the little simple life that the families led with all having the little pigsty in the back garden. And she learned there the importance of neighbours, the importance of family, the importance of friendship and the importance of fate. Moving later then to St. Mary's Park and eventually to Staplestown Road. By that time, um, young girls would have had to get out to work and um, not giving the opportunity maybe to finish the education as they do today. And as a young girl, she went to America as a no pair worked also in Canada, worked with the Blue Sisters in Dublin Street as well, caring for the sick and dying. And she saw how important it is to be with people who are very sick. She was thrown in, if you like, on the deep end. She worked in Aaron Foods as well, in drum and seeds and grain, and worked as a waitress in Crafton Hotel as well and in later life worked with Rita Devereaux in the regional college as well. So she had lots of varied work in this life. And she completed that work, and she worked to the best of her ability. Then she met Dano on a blind date. They married and moved to numbers where they lived for many years and where they brought up and reared their family, and eventually um, they moved to Oakley Park. And in the family situation, in the numbers there, and with Tom too, the uncle, um, she was a loving and um, caring mother, looking after her children. That's such a huge, important work that mothers get to do. So she was a wonderful mother and a husband and a wife to Dano, and in later years, a granny and a great granny as well the lovely family trips in later years to Duncannon, where they would rent a house for a week. All the family would gather around the grandchildren, and she loved it on the beach, bringing the flask of tea and the sandwiches, and then all home then for the dinner in the house. Then she loved to, to travel, a wonderful woman to travel. She travelled with David all over to Turkey, to Canaries, to Bulgaria, Egypt, etc., and that was very important to her. She had a travel bug from the very early um, years. She was known too, as so many people know her, from her lovely singing. And was at a fundraiser for the building of Ascot Church in the 70s, a concert in St. Dibnis, where she brought the house down with a rendering of the Philomena Begley song, I'm Queen of the Silver Dollar. And that was, she got to standing ovation and that name stuck her um, with her um, for the rest of her life and it became her party piece, Mary the Silver Dollar herself. And the first line of that song is, she arrives in all her splendor every night at nine o'clock and Mary herself loved her splendor. She loved her hats, her style, someone that she would always stand back and admire as well. She had that splendor about her as well. She would often be asked to sing at gatherings. She loved to sing to religious um, hymns and songs. 
The work that Jesus was given to do, as that gospel said, was that all of his followers would get to know Jesus in a, perf in a personal way. And Jesus' work certainly succeeded with Mary because she developed a deep friendship with Jesus herself. Her faith was so, so important. In the 70s, when charismatic renewal was so big and she go to the prayer meetings in St. Pat's College, and that led her to many prayer meetings, and she loved him. She would have meetings in her own house too, tea and scones for everyone afterwards. She was known all over Ireland and the world for her Christian meetings. Recent years going to Maura Devine's house in Nocton Bridge on the Monday nights for her prayer meetings. And Antoinette, her loving daughter, would go with her as well. We mentioned at the start her many, many trips to the Holy Land. And the Holy Land was so, so important to her. And you could see why too, because in the Holy Land you're literally following in the, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And you get so close to Jesus and you learn so much about him. And the Bible becomes absolutely alive when you walk the Holy Land itself. And she would go with any group. Group going, off Mary would go, because it was something so important. And that lovely friendship with Jesus stuck with her, and she preached it too, and she lived it. If there was anything wrong, she would tell her family or others too, you know what you need to do now, you just have to put that in God's hands. He will do the work. That's the safest place. Jesus says too many times to us, trust in God and trust in him. Mary would say the same, trust in God, trust in Jesus, leave it in God's hands. Never worry, because God will always provide. Another lovely saying that Mary had as well. God will make a way where there is no way. God will always find a way out. And her faith too extended out as well. Not only from her prayer meetings, because prayer meetings can become a personal faith. But no, Mary herself reached out and her life was an expression of her faith in Jesus as well. She glorified Jesus and glorified God by reaching out to others. Heading off to Zimbabwe, 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 Zimbabwe sorry, with Dr. Jacob to build houses. She wouldn't spend time building the houses, but she would be spending the time with the mothers or the mamas out there. She would be talking to them, listening to them, singing with them as well. And then her various charities that she was always so generous to. Sight saviors or adopt an orphan or just to name but a few. So her life was her fate. And it's a lovely way to live one's life. A deep and personal relationship with Jesus. And that then um, live, was lived out in daily living. And that's what Mary did. And so she too finished the work that God gave her to do. And we now know that she too is glorified with all the saints in heaven. She glorified Jesus by the great work she did. Is that first reading remind us when we live, we live for the Lord. And when we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. And so today we give Mary back to God and draw inspiration from her wonderful life and her faith and her love. Eternal rest grant unto Mary, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her, and may she rest. And may her dear and beautiful soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Please stand now. I'm going to invite Geoffrey, Jessica, Sophie, and Vanessa are going to lead us in the prayers of the faith.
We pray thanksgiving for our neighbours and friends who have been so kind to us during this time of sadness. May God reward their kindness and bless their homes with happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. My grandmother Mary, touch the lives of us all. Help us keep alive in our lives, the values and the ideals she put before us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all our departed brothers and sisters. We pray for deceased relatives. May Grandmother Mary be reunited with them in God's kingdom, where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the relatives and friends of Mary Moore, especially her sons, daughters, brothers and sisters, the members of her extended family, her neighbours and friends. May God fill their hearts with his comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thanks very much. So just for a quiet moment, maybe we'll make our own special prayer for Mary this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace you. So, Lord, these are our prayers which we make to you today. You are a loving, caring God. We make them now to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now. We're going to continue with the offertory. We're going to invite Francis and Jim to bring to the altar the gifts of bread and wine. They will be blessed. They will become the body and blood of Jesus. So pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his soldiers. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Mary, we beseech your mercy that Mary, who never doubted Jesus to be a loving Saviour, may now find a warm welcome. We ask you this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with, and with joy we now proclaim. fount of all holiness, and make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his friends and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said, do this in memory of me. So now we proclaim together in song the mystery of our faith. So therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all people. Remember Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Mary, who was united with your son in a death like his, may now be one with him in resurrection. Remember all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Clair, St. Felix, St. Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. And so we pray through him, with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. you to stand as we pray to a loving Father. We pray to God today for strength, and for courage, for peace, for acceptance, as we pray the prayer his Son Jesus left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all worries, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So you can just maybe silently just wish those around you God's peace, and all those who are joining us virtually again to wish God's peace to those who may be around you today. But above all, I want all of us to pray for that special peace, the peace that only Jesus can give. The peace that he gives us because we trust him and because of our faith in him. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus. This is his body and his blood. This is the same Jesus who came into our world, who taught us how to love, who showed us what that love meant by dying on the cross for each of us, who went back to heaven to prepare a place for all of us. This is Jesus who will give us strength, hope and peace this day. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So just for communion, um, people who join us virtually, I'm going to invite you to pray and act of spiritual communion, and then those here, um, I will bring communion to in a moment. So we pray, my Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So anyone here who would like to receive, I will come down to you and just indicate to me if you would like.
I'm going to invite Gerald to say a few words to us. The Moore family would like to thank Dr. Reamer Halley, the home care team, Bluebird team and Carlos's pharmacy for all their outstanding care and help for our mother, especially through her illness. We would also like to thank family, friends, neighbours and everyone in the community for all their kindness and prayers. Our mother Mary was born in 1935 into a large family in Carlow Town. Mam had a wonderful childhood. Her father always made sure they got to visit Tramore, a fun ride down on his pony and trap for a holiday. As a result, Mammy developed a great love for the seaside and for travelling. Mammy and Daddy met on a blind date and married shortly after that. It was love at first sight. They lived in the numbers, raising a family of nine children, continuously dedicating their lives to taking care of the family. We are all very proud of the amazing job our mother did and our brilliant achievements in motherhood, always being there to encourage us through our lives. Mammy was not only a great mother and grandmother to us all, but also the perfect stranger for anyone to meet who was in need of comfort and help. One of her most favourite ways of helping those in need of comfort was to sing for them. She had a very strong faith, and this passion for God led her to a meeting in St. Patrick's College where she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit during the charismatic renewal. As Jesus said, he who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This joy overflowed out of her like a river and overflowed in touching our lives and the lives of many others home and abroad. I would like to take this opportunity in honour of our mother by reading a poem and it's called Jesus Takes Me Home. Jesus takes me home. Time, worry, pain will be no more and every tear will be wiped away at death for me will have no sting. When Jesus takes me home, what joy shall fill my soul as I gaze through heaven's open door and see the angels singing around the throne. At the brightness of his glory, angels falling down and worshipping at his feet. His power and majesty shall always be throughout eternity. When Jesus calls me home, I will hear his voice saying, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in, my beloved child, to your eternal reward. This earthly tent I will shed into his abundant love and peace, far beyond the natural realm. It cannot be expressed what I will see in God's eternal glory at heaven's open door when Jesus calls me home. Thank you, Ger. And I'm going to invite Nicola, who's going to um, play a piece with you.
Thank you, Nicola. That's fabulous. Really lovely. Thank you very much. Mary would have absolutely loved that. So I invite you now to please stand. So Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for our journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by you today, Mary, our sister, may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank you for um, all who have joined us to celebrate Mary's Requiem Mass. Again, to thank all our readers, our gift bearers, and um, Little Dimple that lovely singing, and the Poor Clare community for their being present here. Very fond of Mary. I know Mary was very fond of them too. And I know it's lovely that they were able to sing for her funeral Mass today. Thanks again to the family for their understanding during these difficult days of restrictions. Um, and thank them for their cooperation and their support. Thanks to Mark Carpenter and his staff as well, and also to our stewards here today as well, and thank them for being here and also for sanitising and all that has to be done afterwards, and Catherine, our sacristan as well. So now the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. So now we come to our farewell prayers. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of Mary, our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So we pray in silence for a few moments for the repose of Mary's soul. I'm going to sprinkle her coffin with holy water from the baptismal font as a reminder of the day that May and John her parents shared with her their greatest gift, the gift of their faith. Today she herself began her Christian journey, and today she took Jesus as a friend for the first time, and that friendship grew and developed um, over the years to be something very, very powerful and strong. It was the day she received, too, um, the promise of heaven for the first time, the heaven that she is now enjoying. We also bless 
or coffin with incense to show our reverence for the human body as a dwelling place of God's spirit. We know that our soul is now risen to God like the smoke of the incense where we bury our beautiful body today. So our response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, come to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Mary, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. We pray into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We thank you for the many blessings you gave her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Mary forever. Peace now. We take Mary to her place of rest. Amen. Mm-hmm.